popular meeting. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
last year with everything, they sold all the tickets online. I guess that worked really well. You have to print out a voucher like you would anywhere else if you buy something online and then you come um, with that voucher. But I think that's that's the uh, the uh, direction they're moving forward on that. But I'll have more updates for the committee after I issue the letter. Okay, PIAA update. Really nothing new, no changes at this time. With the PIAA, everything's kind of moving forward with the fall season. New business. Again, really the fall season's just off and, off and running. The only limitation we have for sports is volleyball due to the mask mandate. Um, it's in more of the athletes themselves do not have to wear them when they're participating, but if they're sitting on the bench, not competing, spectators, um, they do have to wear the masks when they're inside. So, um, and we've been playing under that for the last week, so it has not been like an issue on our end. Um, we are dealing with increased amount of COVID situations with schools yesterday was a prime example. Our volleyball team was headed to, a, to an event and I got a call from the AD while they were in transit saying that he had to shut down the program. So, so they had to turn around. So it seems to be, fortunately at this point, we, we have not had any situations that have caused our programs to be, to be limited, but we are seeing it in uh, neighboring school districts and other school districts. So. Um, well, Bethlehem shut down their elementary and went all, one of them, and went all virtual. Yeah, it seems to be a little more increased at this point than it was last year. Um, but, um, but yeah, that, that's the first event we've had limited because of COVID, and that was yesterday's volleyball match, um, which we are working to get rescheduled. So it is out there, and it's, it is, seems to be a little more prevalent at this point this year than it was last year. So. Um, any new business or items that want to be discussed? Um, question. Uh, mask in indoors. Spectators must wear the mask? Yeah. And what happens if, pardon me, they refuse? It's a mandate, I guess it's enforceable. It's no different than if they refuse to wear them, we would ask them, ask them to, to put a mask on. If they don't have one, if they refuse to wear one, then we would ask them to leave. If they refuse to leave, then Even if they have a medical exemption. If they have an exemption, then and they, they would be exempt from wearing a mask, okay. yes. That's this the, same. the same as it were last yes. year. Yes, yep. Okay, here's another, another one. I came from another community. Forgot my mask. We have yes. mask. Yes. Okay. Yep. Because I don't want to reject anyone either because hey, I just didn't think of it. Now at this point you only I don't have a mask. The only school in our league or surrounding area is Tamalqua that is not following the mandate. So and our, we've communicated that to all of our teams that so when we play them, we play them today, so that would be the only one that really, the expectations would be that it wouldn't, you know. So we play them today, the ball, the ball, so we'll make sure we have some extra masks in just in case. But that was communicated out all until the ADs at our last meeting that, that, that they were the only ones that were not necessarily enforcing the mandate in their buildings.
speed, but tomorrow the band's bigger than we're late and tall come. I can give you the answer. Seventh and eighth grade come out with eyes included in their watch and that is no big deal. But I'm just saying, because their band is so large, it's including seventh and eighth grade. Those people too up there in Tamaco do a hell of a job. Because when I worked here, they would come to the stadium a couple hours before the game and clean off the bleachers, put on paper products so when these kids sat on the bleachers, yeah. they didn't get their uniforms dirty and everything else. They had a heck of a support for their band. But like I say, number one, we know. Discussions for the. I, I have one. We'll get a chance. Why do we have any first? No. You sure. Yeah. Anybody else here have any? <laughs> so, how I did a and Steve mostly Steve because you're on the board. I did a right to know seeking information related to the application of policy for this hazing event that took place in our schools. The information I received from our government agency, official documents coming from the uh, administration, show that Mr. Cleaver, our superintendent, sought information from Kyle Spots, the athletic director, of some of the parties that may or may not have been involved in the events um, and the, the rash of heinous events that occurred that injured a number of students, or that they suffered from hazing. During those conversations and, and requests, it looks like, from what I'm understanding, and Kyle, I'm openly and transparently providing you with the information we were given. If you'd like to supplement that, you're welcome to. But it, it's, Steve, I'm, I'm disappointed in you, because our administration, it looks like, asked Kyle to have a conversation with some of the parties that may or may not have been involved in either A, opening the facility so that they could access it without supervision, or the supervision or the complaints that occurred by these students, theoretically, or the concerns about um, some of the reactions from our staff members related to those events. And on an email of January 14th of 2020, it looks like, according to the right to know, that Kyle met with this guy by the name of Jason Muffley. And the questions that Kyle asked in this email, or, or stated in this email, if you'd like to supplement that, you can, Kyle. But it looks like you only asked him, basically, I'm going to count to make sure. Because, yep, I want to make sure. Yep, there's only two questions. I didn't run out of fingers on these counts. The one is, did members of the program at any point approach you about any concern in regards to the issues or incidents in the locker room? At which point, Jason Muffley answered, none at any point. And then your notes say, did you witness at any point students who were vis visibly upset and or crying? And Jason Muffley responded with, nothing outside of football activities, conditioning, or if an athlete sustained an injury at practice or during a game. Do you have anything other, or any other questions, any other people you spoke to, Kyle, anything about this hazing incident for the application of our hazing policy, where so many kids were brought up in front of the district attorney, and, and of course, related to this process, or are you telling us that that was it? You asked one person two questions. I'm not going to comment on that. At all, Kyle? So who's Jason Muffley? Can you comment on that? Jason Muffley was the middle school football coach. And is he employed at this district? He is not currently employed. Was he employed at the time? He was the middle school football coach. Is he employed as an employee or just as coach? He was just a middle school football coach. 
Did you talk to anybody else in reference to this hazing incident or just Jason? I'm not going to comment any further. Well, if you did, it would contradict what the administration provided. And I think it makes this whole administration and this board look like they're not doing their job, Steve. Did you investigate at all, Steve, any of the issues associated with hazing in our policy to make sure that the students that were convicted of hazing or that were charged with hazing were punished properly through our school policy, Steve? Did you do anything to that regard? Steve Holland, I'm asking you. Dave Bradley, yes, sir. I'm not talking to you. Are you talking to the public at all? Do you want to answer anything associated with what happened to our policies on hazing and these poor kids in this middle school and how the administration apparently asked one guy two questions? Apparently, I don't like your attitude about naming people. It could have been just a coach said, but you think everybody it has to be thrown a name out. I don't like it. Any questions? I'm done. Thank you. Steve, I didn't name this person. Kyle did. I don't know who this person is. I had to ask Kyle who he was. That's where the name comes from. So if you'd like to have a problem with the way that this administration works, you take it up with the administration. I have a problem with the way you, as my director, isn't doing your job to hold this administration accountable. And these kids are being hurt under our watch. And you're not making sure that they're supervised. You're not making sure the administration's doing their job. And you're letting the administration ask two questions about a hazing incident that involved multiple children on multiple dates on multiple instances, heinous crime, frozen. And two questions, Steve, I don't think that's being held accountable. I don't think you're doing your job. I'm glad when you resigned. I'm very glad. I'm looking forward to your resignation because I don't think you're doing your job, Steve. You're my government official. And if you don't like that I named this name, Jason Muffley, be mad at Kyle. He's the one who put it in his email. That was then provided to me. If it needed to be redacted, which it did not, okay. so be it. But this is a government, Steve. You're part of a government agency. You have government authority. You have a badge in your pocket that says government official. Hold these people accountable, Steve, it's your job. And don't let these kids get injured. And if something happens, heaven forbid something happens, investigate the policies of our school to make sure that our policies are being applied so that we can prevent injuries by doing something as simple as supervising students. Now these are the highest uh, offense rate ages inside of a school district. That's right out of the school safety safe report. You as, a, as an experienced director should know where the risks are and mitigate those risks by not having them. So how did these students not be supervised, Kyle? Who is supposed to be on duty during these times that these poor kids were hazing each other? Did anyone ask you this question in the past? Did anyone ask you this question in the past? You can answer no comment. I, I respect that. that. That's your call. Did anyone ask you those questions in the past? Is that a no comment? Okay. Who opened up the locker room? Did anyone ask that question in the past? No comment? When these kids say that they talked to somebody, of authority, and according to the letter received from the school district, during the right to know, it says that they spoke to these people. And nothing happened. And they feel that these students shouldn't have to go to school and be in fear of facing their perpetrators or staff members who didn't keep them safe. That was the formal written complaint by the adult in the room, because apparently we didn't put them in the room. It also talked about that there were several staff members, yet you only showed that you spoke to one of them. Did you speak to the other ones, Kyle? Steve, did you hold him accountable to speak to both that were identified in his parent parental letter? Steve. Steve Holland 
Director of the Heighton Area School District, did you, by any chance, at any time, realize that two staff members were identified in a public, formal, written complaint? Did that get investigated at your level to comply with our local law, our, the Heighton Area School District policy? Was it applied to you? Yeah. You can look at the table all you like, Steve. This is not going away. I can look. It's not going away. It's not going away, Steve. You didn't do your job. You had your job since day one. You didn't do your job. You didn't do your job since day one. When this you is my job. Out too. This is my job. I have That's no job. Jobs. You didn't Thank do you. your job. Let's move on. To no, so I'm doing your job. So I'm sorry. I'm public comment. So it says, I'm writing on behalf of my husband to inform you that our son, the Heighton Area School member, and it happened many times. Many of his teammates throughout the football season. See? When are you going to care about the kids enough to do your job as a public official and hold your administration accountable so we can resolve those policies, so we can fix the policy, make sure that no student is ever left unattended in this regard, to make sure that if a staff member is told something, they take it seriously. In white sports, there was a poor girl that was being raped. She went to an official. They listened to her. It got squashed. Years later, the Auditor General came in. And finally, she got justice. Steve, are you going to wait or are you going to take action now, correct the mistakes in the past, apologize for the mistakes you made, and fix it? Or just resign so someone else can come in and actually do it. Because we need to hold them accountable. And you no longer have a majority you can hide behind, Steve. Wayne already took the resigned head. He should have apologized and resigned, but he just resigned. And good for him. I'm happy for him. What are you going to do, Steve? You're a director. These kids were hurt on our watch. Our policy allowed this to happen. We need to correct our policy to make sure that it doesn't happen. You need to go to a committee meeting like we are here, and it's time to turn it loose. Yeah. You got a chance before you leave office. You can fix this. You can do the right thing. Did you pull this information, Steve? <coughs> did you pull the information on your administration about what they did and didn't do in regard to applying our policy? Or did you? I have those for right now. This took months to get. It. That administration not only denied the information, had to get appealed, had to go to, quote, a judge to prove that we get this information. And of all the information we got, they had to give all of it. And this is it, Steve. Two questions to one person when two staff members were identified. Steve, you're your director. Stop looking at the table. Be a man. Step up. What the heck's going on, Steve? I will be a man. Let's Steve, step up. What's going on, Steve? Why aren't you? Up and is up and it because you worked here? Why aren't you holding these people accountable? Thank you. Why aren't you holding these people accountable? Why isn't Kyle going to be held accountable to answer these questions here in the athletic committee meeting? So you can do your job, and then Kyle can do his job, and if a mistake was made, we can correct it. You don't circle the wagons and hide when kids are injured. You fess up. You say, you know what, a mistake took place. Let's not do that anymore. We had a wet floor. We forgot to put a little wet floor sign out. We won't do it again. If it happens too many times, you take action on it, Steve. That's how, that's how government works. So what did you do, Steve? Okay. You what did, wait, what did you do? I didn't know what he did, and I didn't know why he didn't do your job. You can do it, you can offer it, without yeah. even having to be asked no, by no, a feckless No order. matter what I would say at this meeting, it doesn't matter to your really opinion matter. on what you think of it me and Adam or any administrator. So I'm just better off not commenting. It doesn't matter what happened. You don't have to. I never it. said that. I never said it doesn't matter what happened. I okay, never said that. that. I Good. never said that it doesn't matter what happened. So I said it doesn't matter what I say to you to change your opinion. Actually it does. If you, if you want to step up and say, look, I agree that my board is feckless, 
They didn't even ask me to ask all the people. I chose to do my job anyway. I chose to do my job and publicly show that we're fixing this problem because I asked these people that let them in with the lock and I made sure from now on that they're not going to do that. I talked to the two people that were involved and I'm going to make sure that they hear any rumblings from this age group of children inside of our school district. It's probably something you want to pay attention to. And if we don't have the training, we're going to train them so we don't have to get rid of them. And if we don't have the right people on staff, we're going to train them and try to keep them on staff. And if they can't, we recognize it's time to move on. But these are the mature, responsible, character-driven things that a government agency inside of a government school where an incident occurs. You can't prevent everything. But boy, you know what you can do? You can supervise kids because this is a known problem. This is in Lord of the Flies. It's a book written decades ago. We know this problem. You can't let unsupervised adults govern themselves. That's why we have teachers in classrooms. We have staff members. We have training. If we need the training, this board needs to know, huh? You need to say, we need to train these people on hazing because it's the law in 2018 that we were required to do that. If we didn't do it, we need to correct that mistake. Steve needs to correct that mistake. And as you as a professional need to tell Steve, look, my staff didn't get trained for hazing in 2018 when it was the law. And now in 2019, we have major hazing incident. We need to correct this, Steve, now. Please, let's do it. When I had the anti haze Collaborative come into town, we should have taken up initiative and have that guy that we hired to come in, give that presentation to all our staff members, all of our students, all of our community. This government, Steve Holland, had that opportunity. He missed it. It's bad. He's judged by it. By me and others. To miss that was a mistake. You can correct it. Everybody can turn on you instantly. Steve, you could say, I care what, about the kids want to protect them. Let's do this. Recognize that the mistake was made. That's all we're asking for. And, and the parents in the community was like, have pride in your own school to say, I care more about the kids, and I'm going to fix the policy. I'm going to train our staff. I'm going to make sure we comply with the law in 2018 that says we need to be trained on the hazing and how to prevent it. Okay. Um, next meeting is Tuesday, October 12th. No, I'm not done. 10 a.m. If you tell me I'm done, that's fine. But I'm not. We I'm need not to do that. I'm asking Steve if we're going to do it. Steve, are we going to do this or not? I'll make the motion. Steve, there's no motion. You're in committee. Are you going to do the job or not? Or are you going to walk out on the people? You have a job, you have an elected authority. These people trusted you, they counted on you, they elected you to do a job. They asked you to hold him accountable. Why wouldn't you do the job? You literally gotta walk out on these people. You're not gonna answer the question. You're not gonna ask him the question to make sure he answers. I learned from the best you. I'm walking out. Good for you, Steve. I think it's insulting. I think it's shameless. Thank you for your participation.